Okay. Slow down. Episode. Right? Huh? Yeah. Episode. Yeah. 14? 14. 14. Dude, I was talking. DSC Quattro. I was talking to Clint Perkins today, and. Great, one of the greatest horseshoers around. And he was saying, I didn't know you guys were doing a show. Like, we've only been doing it for 14 weeks. I mean, yeah. well, well, where do I find it? Well, Tom McCutch and Randy Horses Facebook page. Yeah. Yeah, shortly, I think the, uh, we're going to do our own. The show will have its own Facebook page. I think we need to go in that direction. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. So, we're back for episode 14 of the show. Again, Gunny Matheson. Grow the show. Joe Schmidt. And our special guest. My brother, Scott McCutcheon. Much older brother. Yeah. Well, how much older are you? <laughs> um, 13 years. Oh, wow. I didn't realize oh, that's that so much. Long. 13 years. No, you can't tell by the way we look. Yeah. Yeah. Some are <laughs> five. That, that's right. That's true. No, no, it's not a lot. And, uh, you know, Scotty is a multiple gold medalist. Was on the very first team that went to her, to uh, Spain. Jerez, wasn't it? Yep. Yep. In 02. And won the NRBC the year before it was a year or two before it was the NRBC when it was at it the, was lazy. Just the lazy. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, yeah, it was the lazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Won, yeah. won a lot of stuff. How much? Had a, had a big score, didn't I? Had yeah. a big score. Like 30 something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't remember. I wasn't there, but I, I watched, was young. I watched yeah. the run on video and it was right. awesome. Yeah, it was pretty it was cool. awesome. It was still. It would still mark a good score today. It would still mark a mm -hmm. good score today. Yeah. yeah. Don't like a cowboy. And you know, I know Scott's history. Obviously, pretty, pretty well. True. So, but I don't I know can, any of your history, Scotty. None you, of it. You're gonna find out tonight. <laughs> okay. But I can tell you one thing that, uh, and just just on a little bit of a serious note, before we get too far into it, I can tell you one thing. Uh, it was a big part of me getting started to learn how to show horses because I showed in some open shows a lot of open shows when I was a kid but we showed in everything you know the hall didn't really have a the reining horse we showed wasn't wasn't really a reining horse it was a cutter that we tried to make into right. that or but but when Scott was on his own in Eau Claire and I think I had just went, I had just moved to Iowa to work for Jim Dudley and ride some pleasure horses. And he would cut, he had a ton of horses in training and he would call me and I'd come up when he'd go to AQHA shows and he'd have me catch ride a bunch of them every day for him. And I just got in the pen and got in the pen and got in the pen and that was, a, a, and it wasn't as, you know, he showed of course his best ones. <laughs> I, got, I got what was left, so which and I was thrilled to have. I mean, thrilled to have them. So, a big part I think of what helped me learn how to horse show was that. So, well, for sure. I mean, because up up there and back then, they didn't have the horses they have today. I mean, even my first string horses weren't, you know, what they are today. And so, the ones you had to ride, you had to be a pretty good showman to get them through the pattern. I mean, they weren't, they weren't always really willing participants. But that wasn't your fault. I mean, that was, that was just the horses. Horsepower you were doing. That was the yeah, horsepower. For sure, for sure. You trained them amazing. I did, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Enough for Tom to get along Enough with Enough for them. Tom to get along with them, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, there's some of them I maybe I didn't ride, but, but Tom could show them, so I, I didn't have to worry about it. How much did you pay Tom those days when you... Catch oh, I did horses. nothing. You didn't pay anything back then. Oh, yeah. You didn't give them the opportunity. Right. You know, I was so they're learning. learning. Yeah, it's, a it's learning. like like college. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's way more than pay. Yeah. I was happy to get on. <laughs> way more Look where he is today. Yeah. 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 I was happy to have the opportunity. Happy to get on them and and uh, yeah, it was it, it was one of the I think one of the things that if you were look at the things that I that helped me go forward in my whole career, that's it. Because I would show, you know, three, and some of those horse shows were four or five days. For four or five days in a row, I'd show three horses a day, and, and uh, yeah. And they well, were, like I said, they weren't easy. And you said they were well. Oh, man. Well, a lot of, they had a lot of runs in, a lot of AQHA shows. Yeah. Well, there were runs back then that, that, you know, five, six, seven day runs that you just, you just show and keep all day showing. and party all night. 
Uh, you said they were all around horses. You did everything then. When did you switch to just rainers? Well, I always did basically just the rainers. When when Kathy and I first got married, she did all the hunt seat and the and pleasure horses, and she had more training horses than I did. And it just it just kind of evolved over over time. When, when we started having a family and raising kids, then she kind of got stuck with with. Um, raising the kids and I, I did more of the horses and it just turned into more more rainers but yeah when you're when you live up north you got to do uh, I had barrel horses I had um, um, you know mostly rainers but um, a couple pleasure horses but you have to do a little bit of everything up north it wasn't until we moved down here where you could really when we moved to Texas you could specialize huh? Yeah, and so go back a little bit earlier. So all of you're 13 years older than I am, and uh, I was, in a sense, I was an only child for right. a long time because all you guys were gone and off to college. And uh, Scott played college football, and uh, Jim played college hockey. And Terry was in the college rodeo, so they were all college athletes, and. Uh, they took all the good DNA, apparently, because <laughs> uh, it wasn't uh, it wasn't in my cards. But uh, I was I get the brains, oh, uh, yeah. and, the, and, the looks. and the looks, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. <laughs> but they got the athletic ability, right? So, uh, but didn't and you worked some? You you built some houses and did that. I remember there was a church there in in River Falls that every time we drive by there, you and which is probably. 500 times in my lifetime you pointed to it and said see that steeple i put I made that, that steeple on yeah there. and I, I i scribed my initials in it <laughs> and uh, it hasn't been struck by lightning yet but um yeah I, I going through college i i worked some construction and jimmy and i with another contractor built a house and um and it's still standing so hey <laughs> that's <laughs> Yes, it's all That's fine. better than what I could do. Yeah, well, and Mandy, I just heard Mandy and whispering over there. You must have really instilled it in me good because when I'm just with Mandy, every time we drive by that church, I say, You Scotty point at it too. People. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I get it. I was pretty pretty proud of that church. Yeah. I'm part of that. I'm part of that church. Yeah. No, it was, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun growing up. And I, with our... Our family was always so competitive. I mean, Dad made everything. Everything was super competitive all the time. I mean, you couldn't. Even when they were over the house and you were just a kid? Well, those guys, so when I was probably, I guess, seven or eight, you guys were still around because you were in college and uh, Jimmy was still around. Terry was gone. But you guys were around a lot, and we were always, I mean, always doing something. And then as I got older, we played a ton of basketball. You know, I played high school hockey, and then after that, we played a ton of basketball. I mean, there was always, I would say sports was one of the things that our family always had in common, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're always doing that. I mean, Dad always took time to do some of that with us. Um, you know, the, the, we all had to turn back for Dad. I mean, Dad, Dad would rope. He had rainers. He had cutters. Um, he had a pleasure horse, a couple of pleasure horses at one time. I mean, back then, you, you know, like we were saying earlier, you had to do everything. And we had a little pony named Little Joe, and I rode him and turned back for Dad, and then Jimmy rode him and turned back for Dad, and then by the time Tom got to him. Um, he was pretty broke. He was pretty broke. I mean, he would cut. He knew more than I did. He knew more than Tom did. And if a cow got by him and went to the other end of the pen, little Joe would turn around and take off, put his head down and take off and head that cow and turn back and bring that cow back to Dad and the herd and there'd be Tom sitting in front of the saddle. <laughs> sometimes I was still with him when he came back and sometimes I wasn't. That pony got so good at his job and and then when the pony was about 20 or 25 we sold him to the neighbor uh, 
and, and he was a veterinarian in town and his daughter showed him in a pony pleasure at the Minnesota State Fair and won it like wow. three years in a row. I mean he was just... At the age of 20 or 25? Yeah, just a good, good little pony. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a good pony and I missed, I remember standing in the trailer wondering why is dad giving my pony away? But uh, in hindsight now I know because apparently I'd get on him and I'd, we had 80 acres of hills and apparently I'd get on him and just Whip him around up, up and around around the hills, and oh, yeah. come back, time to the time to the tree, and he'd be huffing and puffing, and I'd go and get a drink, go back, get on, do, it, do again. it again, just go all, <laughs> all, just go, go, go. And when we had a quarter mile long driveway, and Dad always made my older brother Terry and I had to walk, run down to catch the bus. It picked us up at the end of the road at the bus. And when Tom was going to school. Dad would go down, saddle the pony. Tom would get on the pony, ride it down at the end of the road, <laughs> and turn around and slap him on the butt. He'd run back up into the barn where Dad was doing chores. He'd unsaddle him and put him away. Maybe why I was really? the least athletic one of the bunch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I got to ride the pony. That was a, that was a good, no good kid, little pony. That's cool. That was and a, is that the same pony that he would only leave for the longest time? He wouldn't ride? Uh, I, you know, I don't remember. I don't remember that. Yeah. Um, which one, which one of the, was it you or Jim that the in-laws came over and, and they were leaving, they were going down the driveway and the pony took off running alongside the car. Was that you or Jim? And they couldn't stop him. And our, our family members were city folks and they just were waving at whoever it was <laughs> and he's trying to stop the pony and, the, and they I went, think it was Jimmy. Okay, it was Jim and down the drive, a quarter mile long, quarter mile long driveway and around the corner and up to the neighbor's house before he got the pony stopped. And my cousins are all waving, like, look, he's running with us. And he's trying to get this thing stopped. And That's good. Yeah, yeah I, can, I can tell you, like, a big transformation for, for Scotty playing college football. So when, how, how much did you weigh when you graduated high school? I was 125. 125 when he graduated high school. And uh, he... What did you, you, you had, you were real sick when you were young. What did you have? Oh, I had, um, what did I have? Oh, spinal meningitis. Yeah. Spinal meningitis. Hmm. And uh, I, I don't know, I don't even know what that is, but something with your spine. <laughs> <laughs> Some kind of itis. Yeah. 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 Spine. He, he yeah. had the meningitis on your spine. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what it was. Sure. It doesn't yeah. sound good either way. No. Okay. <laughs> He had no. the itis. Anything you get when you're a kid that's an itis. Uh, that's an itis. That's, that's bad. That's, that's permanent. Bad. You still yeah. got it. I bet. I think I do. Yeah. So it runted him. He pretty good. He was the runt of the litter there oh, growing yeah. up. And then uh, went away to college and came back and I don't know. I don't know what you did in college. I don't know if you did steroids or what you did in no, college. No, yeah, just beer. Beer. A lot of protein in beer. Beer and weights. Oh, yeah. 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 Beer and weights. Yeah, beer and weights. No, it, yeah, it, it's just... Just a late bloomer. I mean, I, I, I grew up in college. So what useless college degree did you get then? You're a horse trainer. You know, that's an excellent question. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, okay, you got a four-year one, but actually, they didn't give you a piece of paper. No, you know what? I never did because <clears throat> when I quit playing, my, my eligibility for football was up. I quit going to college. So I, was, I, mean, I actually like six credits short from graduating. Hmm. So, but I, I went to school for animal science. So, I mean, it, it kind of kind of fits what I'm doing. Went to school for animal science, but I think he studied mostly space invaders. <laughs> oh, I was good at that. Yeah, <laughs> I had one of the high scores at the local tavern there for a while. And drinking beer at oh, the yeah. local yeah. tavern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. And I the first place you had there was just in River Falls. Was just a. It was an old. I don't know if it's a dairy barn on the bottom with a hayloft on top, and you you put you know six or eight stalls in there. And yeah, made it work. Yeah, there was a there was no running water. There there was a well there, but there was a house there, and Dad and, and a couple guys bought this 200 acre ranch and or farm, and this this house and barn was on it. And so we'd make hay off the place, put it in the top of the barn, but the bottom was it was it had stanchions, old wooden stanchions, that's how old it was. And the barn was put together with wood pegs. There was no nails in it. That's how old it was. 
And when Kathy and I start dating, we put stalls in there, put some horses in there. And, and Terry and I lived in the house while we were going to college for a short time. And there was no heat and there was no running water. And there was, there was an outdoor um, outhouse. And so the winter's up there are really cold. Yeah. And when you got to use the restroom at night or in, in the winter time, Jeez. I mean, you had to bundle all up and then <laughs> you get your, you got to wait till you got to get your stuff done. <laughs> you know, you had to be ready when there, you hit the you door. Know, you're not reading no, no yeah. magazine and sitting there. I mean, you got to get her done. But um, you don't have the rainer sitting there. No, ready to go over now. No, no cell phones back then. To, you know, look at Facebook or anything. Thank goodness. But I, when it got cold, I moved back home, and my brother Terry stayed there all winter. I mean, wow. he's tough. Yeah. he's tough. He's a, he's a, brother Terry is probably he's a college professor. Probably the smartest one of all of us, and the, probably the nicest one of all oh, of us. Oh, for sure, the nicest. And probably the toughest one. So of all he of us. went to college and teaches in college. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and he doesn't hang with this group. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> He's the smartest. Yeah. The he didn't stop six so current short. Yeah, yeah. No, no. And he got him and his wife both got inducted in the uh, Hall of Fame uh, for for their rodeo in uh, Kentucky. Murray State, Kentucky. They got they got uh, both of them inducted into the, into the huh. Hall of Fame there. So he was not only good at his at his rodeo, but yeah, he got his degree and he's a teacher. How many credits short did you stop college, Tom? <laughs> uh, well, I bribed my way out of high school. So you, you know, know the brains. You know the brains of the family. I knew there was no college on my horizon. Hmm. That was. That was not even in the playbook for me. I had no interest in that. But, uh, so you got out of college and you start riding horses right away, or, or no, you started building churches and, and houses and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, back to Tom. So Tom was a pretty good football player, and and when I was in Eau Claire, I'd go watch him play football, and I'd drive I'd drive an hour to go watch him play football, and he was a fullback and hard to tackle. But if somebody tackled him... He'd start crying. No, he'd get mad and throw a punch. Oh. oh, yeah. And they'd kick him out of the game. So there I am, driving an hour, and he's, he, kicked, he, out he, he's, kick, he's <laughs> kicked out of the game. He's kicked out of the game. Well, he tackled me real hard, and I wasn't, I wasn't happy about that. But that's football. Yeah, that's, that's a good... Yeah, yeah. He kind of do Just that. Didn't quite understand the concept. <laughs> yeah. But... And then, and then hockey played high school hockey, and they allow you to throw a punch there. Yeah, but I think he, he had several concussions, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I've had <clears throat> I've had plenty of plenty of concussions. I don't actually. It's funny we talk about it. I I don't remember my graduation. I mean, I don't remember. I know I know I graduated. You got the piece of paper uh, somewhere, but I don't remember a thing about that day. I mean, it's. <laughs> That's crazy. What made you move to Whitesboro? Uh, that, that's a good question. I, I was, um, Kathy and I were working out of a place in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, and it came up for sale. And Kathy and I had the first chance to buy it. And I, I always knew that my dad wanted to go to Texas or go south. And he never did. Once, once he had kids and we were all in school, then he stayed put and raised a family. And so <clears throat> when, when that place came for sale, we moved back down to my mom and dad's for just a, a short time. And Craig Johnson was doing a clinic in River Falls. And that's our hometown. And so Craig said, um, he said, hey, there's a place for rent in Gainesville. And back then, you could use somebody else's miles flying and so a customer of mine had extra miles so he gave me a ticket and I came down and I looked at a place in Gainesville it was it was for rent and I liked it and so I talked to the lady that owned it and she was from Virginia um, never never even she just bought it and just owned it and it was empty 
And so Kathy and I talked to her, and, and um, she said, yeah, let's, let's work something out. And I think she charged me maybe 1200 a month for the whole place wow. back then. Cool. And so we took it, and then, and then what she did was she had a couple horses back in Virginia, and there were, there were Eddie Blue Roses. And she wanted, to know, wanted me to try them as rainers. So what I did was I, I didn't have to pay her anything. I took two horses in for training or three horses in for training to pay for the rent. So it didn't cost us any cash out of our pocket. And so we were there for eight years. And I mean, it was, it was, it was a great move for us. And then um, what year did you go to Italy? Do you remember? 89 maybe. 89, I moved down there in 88. Yeah, 88, 88, because that first, yeah, 88, because uh, I remember that you, you were on, yeah, I can't remember. No, honestly, I can't remember. You were, um, so Jim Babcock was out on the track with you looking at horses. Remember that? Yep. When I was, and I, I walked down to see Scotty, and apparently my hat was like this. Because of the concussion, and I was and I was follow, <laughs> I was following it sideways, and uh, I walked down there and I said to Scotty, I said, I think something just happened, but I'm not sure what. And he goes, Well, what what do you think happened? I I don't know. So we walked back up to the barn, and he said he knew something was wrong when he grabbed the back of my pants and he says, Yep, your ass is cracked. And I said, <laughs> I, it I is. said, I said. I pulled his pants out and I looked down there and I said, what color is blood? And he said, red. Oh, that's He's it. all right. <laughs> that's it. So we walk into the barn and there is shit everywhere. And so what must have happened, I was in the arena and I was probably going to go down and see him. And I, and I, I think I went out the man door on a horse, I just, which we did all the time. Bronc. That thing was a bronc. Too. And just duck under it. And I think when I ducked under it, he must have, he must have broke in half or did something. Because there, and Kathy took me to the hospital, and, and uh, yeah, I was, I don't have a memory of that. I mean, wow. it knocked me out. Yeah. And I walked down there. But anyway, so that story is leading to whatever year that was. Was that the first year you were down there? Yeah, that was the first year, because that's, that's... Okay, so that was 88, because I remember I, went, I was in the hospital for a few days, came out, they told me not to ride for a couple of days. And then Lucio Ferrarini called me from Italy and asked me yeah, if I, think, I want a job. Yeah, I think Dick Peeper got you hooked up, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, maybe. And because <clears throat> Dick had a lot of contacts over there then and, and sent a lot of people over there. Yeah. And, um, but Kathy and I took uh, Tom to the airport and I, I could have said one negative word and he'd have, he'd have, he'd have not gotten on that plane. Really? So we, we had to be really, really positive to get him on that plane. And and was Jim over there already? Yeah. And Jim, so Jim was there, and uh, Dale. Dale Harvey was there, and Jimmy Kaiser, Dwayne. No, not Dwayne yet. Not Dwayne yet. yet? No, it was basically, it was, it was Jimmy and Dale. Was Dean there? Nope, Dean came later. You know, maybe Jimmy and Dale were the two main ones that first year, but I can remember sitting, I, I can remember being on the phone, and I lived with Mike Davis at the time, and I got the phone call, and, and uh, he says, how much you want for four months? We just need you for four months, how much you want? And I just came from working for Jim Dudley, and I was making 600 bucks a month. So I just ran back and said, 20,000. And he said, okay. And I went, oh shit. I hung up the phone, and I told Mike, I said, I have to go to Italy. <laughs> and that's how the whole, that's how my whole Italian thing started. But yeah, so that would have been, and the only reason I went to that is, I remember if that's the year I went to Italy would be 88 then the first year. Yeah, yeah, and so <clears throat> then Jim was over there, and when they'd come back from Italy, they'd, they'd be done in November. Mm-hmm. And so they'd have four months off before they had to go back. And so they, Jim and Tom, stayed with Kathy and I, and we had a we had a double wide trailer house. And you know, Tom being the younger brother, and me being the the ex athlete, right. he wanted to wrestle me every day, <laughs> every day. 
We broke more furniture. There's even a hole in the floor where the, the floor broke. And for the next years that we lived there, we'd walk on it, you'd sink way down. <laughs> and, and I mean, we threw each other around. I mean, it, it was... Yeah, it, it was, was rough. It was rough, but and then it wasn't shortly after that Dad started coming down. Yeah, and and back then, Dad would always find a place and rent it, and he'd clean it all up and it'd be for sale, but he'd clean it all up and and weed eat and mow and and cut stuff down and fix things up and and um, and then they'd end up selling it. And then so the next year he'd run another place. Got a little bit easier every time because they knew, hey, he sold the last one and then, I mean, every, every year it got a little bit easier for him to find something. And, and when I moved down in 88, the, the economy had kind of crashed, the oil market had yep. gone down and, 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 and dad sat me down and he said, don't go. He said, don't go. He says, you got a good name here. Um, you know, don't go down there. And everybody's going out of business and this money's bad. And I said, well, I, I told him, I said, you know, Dad, I can always come home, but I'm going to try it. And so I went down and then wasn't long after that. Um, he was down every year. Uh, and then maybe four or five years after that, Mom had a, a gift store in River Falls. She sold that and then she started coming down. <laughs> in the winter so they you know they spent the winters down here and the summers up there and i mean you can't really beat that the summers up there are, summers in wisconsin are just beautiful yeah the winters are brutal huh? yeah they're absolutely brutal and how, how long after you moved down here <laughs> i can remember helping you move down here uh it was hotter than a son of a gun 105 I mean, yeah all the way through iowa i mean the whole country was under a, a bad heat advisory yeah, and I remember driving, I got to drive the big U-Haul, the big yellow U-Haul. And I was driving that U-Haul and smoking a cigar all the way down. And I don't even <laughs> smoke cigars. I have no idea why I did that, but it felt like the right thing to do when you're in that big U-Haul. Yeah, I mean, I was driving the U-Haul. And I felt like I was king of the world right Did there. you have driving gloves on or anything like that? No, nope, nope, I just smoking that cigar, driving that U-Haul. I, I, one, made it all the way from... Wisconsin, to, one cigar from Wisconsin to Texas. <laughs> but. Well, we wondered. Kathy and I were ahead of them, and, and, and Kathy looks back, and there's a big road construction, there's a big pile of sand, and, and Tom's got the U-Haul with all our stuff in it, and he goes right over that pile of sand, tips that thing on two wheels for a little while, and then lands her back down, and Kathy goes, oh my gosh, he just ruined all our stuff. <laughs> it didn't matter. I no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. He's, I he's, care one hand on no. the wheel. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's king of the road. Sand ain't gonna stop me. Oh, oh yeah, that's king of the uh, road. <laughs> then he, I, he, he was with Phil Solom, and they hit a boat. A guy pulling a boat, and it had an outboard. And <laughs> wait, wait yeah. a second. You went through a pile of sand, yeah, yeah. and you hit a guy with a boat, yeah, yeah. while smoking a cigar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, just. Just and then, to, not not to jump ahead anybody, but he flies to horse shows now. Then, yeah, he doesn't drive for, rigs. Fortunately, okay? yeah. Yeah. Jesus. And 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 they convinced the guy, they did him a service because now it's not an outboard; it's an inboard. inboard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now you're yeah. good, man. Yeah. Well, he was going. If it wasn't my fault, that guy was going too slow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we told him that. I said we said you cannot go that slow in the slow lane. You got to be over on the side of the road because he was going like 30 miles an hour. Yeah, you can't and do that. Course, in a construction zone. I could see through all the smoke <laughs> and the sand and the yeah. sand <laughs> and the construction. <laughs> and well, the oh my goodness. Yeah. Take cigar. And I hit the brakes, oh. and I mean, I hit the brakes oh. on that thing, and I, I just locked her right up, and I knew I was going to hit him when I was and I hit that boat and shoved it right into his camper. <laughs> like, he had, you know how those trucks, those guys from up north drive the, the, the camper in the box? That's in the yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, hit, I hit that boat and it went right into his camper. It probably yeah. just went in the back door, though. Usually the uh, door was yeah, on the tail right there. Yeah. So he just crunched the door. Yeah, yeah and he, he told the guy, he said, look at the bright side. You don't need that trailer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, we got yeah. out of there with no. I told him if uh, if we all just go on our way, I won't press charges. Because <laughs> you're going too slow, yeah. damn it. Yeah. I bit off the end of my cigar. I might, yeah, I might, even, 
Keep that truck this, moving. This is my brother's stuff back here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, that was, wow. That was it was crazy, but no, that that was a uh, it was a fun trip actually. I, I enjoyed it thoroughly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah well, we Linda, Kathy and I were a little concerned, but yeah. but it all turned out fine. It all turned out fine. We threw out half that stuff, and <laughs> <laughs> well, you needed new stuff. Yeah, yeah we we're looking for some new stuff anyway. But <laughs> yeah, well, uh, who's, who's the genius that let me call the dishes? I mean, yeah. Yeah. really, oh, that doesn't geez. make any sense at all. <laughs> so you rented the place for eight years in Gainesville, and yep. then bought, bought your ranch in Whitesboro. Yeah. But how far? How long were you in Gainesville before you got? Uh, uh, Pe uh, what's his name? Pepe Badger, Badger check. One year. Yeah. Just so 89. So you 89. started off like with a bag. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I I knew what I was. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought Avila had Pepe Badger checks. After me. Oh, really? Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I didn't know you had him first. Oh, yeah. 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 First, yeah. Dude, he's been he's taking all that credit all these yeah. years. Yeah. But it was yeah. Scott oh, yeah. yeah, I made him a world champion. And when I had him, they said that the theory back then was if a horse was a big if the horse was a big stopper, probably couldn't turn. That was the theory back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was one of the first horses that could turn and stop. And, and I you mean, trained him to do both of those things. You know, he was he went to the cutting fraternity. Okay. With Del Bell, and and Randy Butler catch rode him for Del, and he was out of a daughter of King Fritz, and um, they just I don't know why they sent him to me because they just moved there apparently, and and they wanted to try me and I put two months on him, and Larry Sullivan said would he make a would he make a a reigning horse I said yeah I think he will, and. So he says, okay, here's what I want to do. I'm going to take him then to Bob Loomis. And that's, that's fair enough. I mean, Bob Loomis is, he, he's, he's it back then, you know. And so that's all, that's all good. So Bob rides him for a short time. And Larry Sullivan is a halter horse guy. And so he goes up to Loomis out un, unannounced and can't find the horse and finds him back in the two-year-old barn without a blanket on in March. And so... He's not happy. The horse is going to hair up, and he's a pretty horse, and and he's going to hair up. So he loads him in the trailer and brings it back to me. And Bob told him that he wouldn't be ready to show that year. And Bob is right. I mean, you know, Bob's had how many world champions and yeah. thirty champions. He knows. I don't know. And so I try to get him qualified for the world, and I have trouble because he's not broke as a rainer. And so I show him at at Ardmore, which back then was the first of November. And I have to pull up because I can't. I mean, he's just not good at all. And the world show is two weeks later. And two weeks later, he's a world champion. I mean, the ground was horrible. And he stops through all that bad ground. And I, I Kathy dressed me. I had a little bow tie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I think I was the only one in your family that even went and watched. Yeah, you were the only one there. No, you were the no, only one. Nobody, nobody thought no. that was going to work. No, yeah. nobody thought it was going to work. <laughs> I mean, but I, damn, I proved them wrong. Didn't yeah. <laughs> huh. yeah, kind of that story kind of deflated. I was, I was like, yeah, I put me back your checks and Scotty. And then well, he won the really that world good. champion. World champion, I won it by two and a half points. Yeah. Eddie Cridge is one of the judges. Really? Oh, yeah. I know it. Yep. And then how how far after that was it when you had uh, the you had a full brother to Smart Little Lena? Yeah, Smart Peppy Lena. Um, that was ninety. That was the next year. So it was kind of all. And then when did you win the Derby? Um, ninety three, ninety three. I won the Derby on uh, on a B eight song and dance. And then ninety four, I won the. That's a good story and our, too. The lazy, B, yeah. BH Song and Dance. Tell that story. Oh yeah, BH Song and Dance. So <clears throat> I had Smart Peppy Lena and I just wanted a I wanted a BH Enterprise because that was the hottest thing going with Bill Horn, you know. And so I wanted a, a BH Enterprise mare and she was out of um, Me uh, Melody Jack and she was a full sister to Mr. Melody Jack. And Kenny Eppers showed her at the Congress and loped off in the wrong lead and changed leads and marked a 225. I mean, she was a phenomenal mare. And so <clears throat> Bill Horn had her, didn't like her. 
Rick Weaver wrote her for a little bit for Bill and didn't like her. Sam Smith wrote her a little bit and didn't like her. And I bought her just as a broodmare. I give $6,000 for her. And I'm riding her at home and I, I, I don't like her. She's gassy. She won't walk anywhere. She jigs everywhere. And so one day I'm out on my track and it's about 400 feet long. And I'm out on my track and, she, and she's looking out over the fence into the pasture and she's just wanting to run. I said, okay. You want to run, let's go. And I, I put my hand down and I just give her a little smooch and she took off. And I went about uh, that 400 feet, I went about 300 feet and I said whoa to her and I didn't pull her because I was going to really get into her and teach her a lesson. And she locked up the brakes and slid 50 feet. I go, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> and so I started to like her a little bit more. So then I took her to a as a three-year-old, I took her to a quarter horse show as a filler, and 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 I end up fourth in the class. And she's everywhere. She's jigging, jigging, jigging everywhere. And I'm just, I just want to kill her. And as soon as it's my turn to go in, jigging is a college term for a specific type of gait. I'm assuming one little of which quick footed, non-college yeah. people. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She she had a kind of a quick step. Okay, okay, we got you now. <laughs> you didn't know what jigging was before that? No. no Are you I, serious? I thought jigging was some type of fishing. Okay. <laughs> 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 they got them jigs back there. Oh yeah. We're going, going jigging. To, we're going to some jigging. <laughs> we gonna go, go cast this jigging. Oh, I went jigging here last week. Yeah, no, no, that's it. that's noodling. Yeah, that's noodling. Oh, that's yeah. a whole other thing. Yeah, well. Yeah. Totally different. Different yeah, part yeah. of our <laughs> Nonetheless, I That's have no you idea your what, other arm. what jigging is, okay? <laughs> okay, so it, it feels like it should be a term of profanity, actually. Yeah, no, no, it's just, a, you know, when they're... <laughs> jigging, <laughs> yeah. apparently. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. yeah, she's a jigging. <laughs> okay. So, now there's oh, kind of a half trot everywhere. Yeah. You're filling a class, you're jigging yeah. into the class. No, yeah. <laughs> and as soon as I go through the gate... Not, not fishing. Not fishing. <laughs> as soon as I go through the gate, she just drops her head and she walks in. And I thought, oh, she must be colicky or something. You know? <laughs> and, and I go through the class, she stops, she turns, she does everything. So I, I bring her out, as soon as I open the gate and I come out here, she goes again. <laughs> and so I take her, Tom comes home from... Italy, and he watches me get her ready up at, at Ardmore in, a, in the Oklahoma fraternity, not not the Southwest fraternity, the Oklahoma fraternity. And I said, Tom, you gotta watch this marijuana when I show her. And he's going, Don't show her. She <laughs> makes you look so bad. And said, Which and usually I was right when I told you that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's still <laughs> today. Yeah. And and I said, You just gotta see her in there. You just have to see her in the pen. No, I'm telling you, don't show her. Don't show her. I go in and I show her. He beats me to the end gate. He goes, that's your best one. That's how different she was in the huh. Huh. And I was seventh in the fraternity honor, won the derby honor. Wow. And then uh, finals at the Lazy E honor. I mean, she was she, she won 35000 but which back then it was, was, a, lot of money. was, a, nice, was yeah. a nice deal. And, and then Lindsay, that's got her start. That's how Lindsay started. She started showing oh, her. Oh, really? And then my next daughter showed her. and. She never showed again <laughs> because it was a run-in pattern. She ran in, stopped, nice, rolled back to the left, run to the gate, stopped, and, and she knew she was supposed to go to the right, but the BH farm ass wanted to go left. And she goes, well, she's done this more than I have. So, so she just let her. So she let her go to the left, and she got a zero. And she goes, but, Dan, didn't I do anything right? Why didn't you get a zero? Can't they give you a score for some of the stuff? <laughs> and that was kind of, then she was a broodmare after that. But yeah, she that was that was a that was a good little mare. Yeah, you had a good string huh. of horses That's right cool. there. Because when did uh, Don't Like a Cowboy come along? Uh, uh, 94. 94. Yeah. So in that five or six year period, you had a pretty good set of horses. Yeah. Yeah. yeah really good set of horses. And then and then Mega Jack came. Yeah. And then he was he was on the first international competition. I want to say he was after Don't Like a Cowboy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did Don't Like a Cowboy jig? No. No. He was he was pretty quiet, wasn't he? Yeah, he was quiet. I mean, he was real real steady, but he was. Did Mega Jack do a jig? No, oh, no, no. Nobody else jig except for her. Just her. She <laughs> was the jigger. She was yeah. the only jigger I had. Did any of her babies jig? <laughs> no, no jigger. 
<laughs> no, you don't. You don't want it. No, I it's don't not want a good it. thing. <laughs> don't don't be mistaken. It's so a, it's negative. When they're digging, they're digging. But you can say, do they dig? So if I buy yes. a horse at a sale, can I ask, is he a digger? Yes. <laughs> or yes. Does he dig? Yes. You gotta be, really yeah. be clear. Yeah. Yeah. Be very yeah. clear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. happens more in like trail horses and stuff. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, when they're heading back home. I don't think you'll see it today, honestly, with the horses bred the way they are, so quiet. I don't think you see a jigger today. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is this is, this is, this is probably this is probably the most most in depth discussion about jigging in a while. But but you're right. You see it more like in trail horses and stuff like that, I think. I don't think, I don't think some of these young viewers would even know what a jigger is. No, I well, didn't Gunny know didn't. What a jigger is. No, and he's a I judge know. and a professional yeah. and yeah, you think he's everything. Yeah. I've been to an Arab show and I couldn't tell you now, if they Arabs just jigged in their van yeah. or they just trotted. Arabs would do that. No, you, you, Arabs would do that. You can definitely tell the difference. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you'd call it prance. No, yeah, prank, yeah similar, prank's kind of the same thing. Similar. Yeah, but maybe like yeah. jigging is like a little more toned down prance. Well, well, it's both are irritating as hell. Yeah, and <laughs> prancing, prancing, you would have a slight hold on. Jigging is loose. Yeah, jigging can be in a loose vein. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> so, Man. So so moving on. <laughs> Uh, when you left, uh, so how, what made you decide you wanted to have your own place? So you moved over to Whitesboro. Yeah. And I can remember that was that was probably one of the smartest things you ever did. But at the time, I remember thinking, man, there is nobody here. You're moving yeah. in the middle because yeah. we were in Gainesville. Yeah. And yeah. Gainesville was was a big deal back then. And then you moved to Whitesboro. There was nobody there. Yeah. yeah. You know, Pilot Point, Aubrey, Gainesville were the hub of the horses. And everybody said Whitesboro's in the middle of nowhere, but <clears throat> Todd Summers was the first one there. And I just looked at the map, and the only way to get to Gainesville from, from Pilot Point was up through there, up right past yeah. Whitesboro. So, and and now, now Whitesboro is is, I mean, there's there's ropers, cutters, pleasure horse, hauler horse. I mean, it's yeah. it's. Uh, well, and you were like one of the first to have a covered arena out there. Aren't yeah, you? Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, sure. your your place is in a subdivision now, almost. There's a lot of houses around there. I mean, not a lot of big, a lot of big houses. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you bought how many acres? 106 there. 106 acres. Yeah, yeah. that's beautiful. There's rolling tree, rolling hills and trees, and yeah, a lot of pond. Or there's three ponds on the place, and big, a lot of fish. We don't fish, but. But the neighbors come and, and you jig a little. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They jig for them like you jig, yeah. jig for crappie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They've, they've caught eight pound bass out of those ponds. <laughs> and they put them back. Oh yeah, we make them throw them back. Yeah. No, oh, that's that front pond there. Mm -hmm. Throw when you drive in there. Yeah. So how did <laughs> back to the horses? <laughs> yeah. How uh, how different was Mega Jack when you got him? How how was because he was a pretty special horse. Yeah, you know, he was he was a good horse. Um, you know, Craig did very well with him. Uh, he was a finalist in the fraternity, I think maybe seventh. He won the Southwest fraternity on him. And then uh, I got him. And the first time I showed him was at the Lazy E, and I was third on him there. And, um, and then I showed him at the Derby, and it was pattern nine. And, and I back up the la at the end of it, which you don't do. And I went and looked at the score sheets, and he he would have won the Derby if if I wouldn't have went off pattern. So he he was a good horse. I mean, I I showed him, and then one one weekend I couldn't show him, and the last minute I called Tim uh, McQuay and asked if he'd go show him for me, and he flew out to Raleigh, North Carolina, and he showed him. You were hauling for a title that year, right? Yeah, I was going to haul for a title that year. And Tim marked a 151 on him the first day and a 226 on him the second day. Wow. I'd never been on him before. Wow. And then the next weekend was the Lazy E, and I wasn't supposed to ride yet, And but I, I, I told Tim off. Well, let's go back a minute now. So I can remember what he's talking about, he wasn't supposed to ride. We played in a basketball league 
in Whitesboro, Texas, a bunch of horse guys playing that. the basketball league. <coughs> and uh, Tom started a fight. No, as a side note, as a side note, we, we won, won. We yeah, won the yeah, league two that, years yeah. in a row. And it was but a pretty tough league, right? I mean, those guys ball. were yeah. those guys were pretty pretty violent. Yeah, it? Was, yeah. it was they, very I tough mean, league. they were real tough for being in a small town, yeah. over eight thousand people. You know? No, no, there was teams from McKinney and. Yeah, yeah no. Sherman, there was Sherman. Sherman. That, that kid that played with the Chicago Bulls. There was teams from I towns, is what you're saying. Yeah, the yeah. other towns. Yeah, John Bach. He's oh, my really? neighbor now. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, I remind him of it all the time. He's 6'8. I stuffed him. But that, <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that, that was a rough league. I mean, they had to. Uh, so, towards the end, the last year of the league, towards the end, they had to call the police. To escort everybody, the, they had to ref, escort the refs out, and they always had police standing there for the games. But anyway, so we got sidetracked a little bit. But we're playing a game, and it started. You know, we're, I don't know, we're halfway through, maybe the second half. And I look at Scotty, and he's he's trying to walk this way, but he's walking that way, and I mean, he's just something is super not right, and. So he sits down through the game, and I, re and I remember after the game he went home, which is five minutes from the gym. And uh, I talked to my, uh, my dad talk, called me, because I think, did he go, did mom and dad go with you home, home dad, for a little while? Yeah, yeah, dad, dad uh, took me to the emergency room. Yeah, and he ended up taking you to the emergency room, and, uh, and they said you had, in Gainesville, Texas, they said he had an ear infection. Yep. So it wasn't your spine bifida. <laughs> so, <laughs> meningitis. Final meningitis. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. not spine bifida. Yeah. That's something different. Same thing. <laughs> so they, had, they said he had an ear infection. Jesus. So he came back a couple of days later, and we had another game, and the same thing happened again. So then they went down. He went down to uh, a specialist in Dallas, and he had a stroke. Really? Yeah. Stroke of bad luck. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he had a, had a stroke, and that 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 that's why Tim had to catch ride that horse. That took that took a long time to get over that. Yeah, I think you're still struggling with a yeah, lot. Yeah, I know that. Still yeah. Yeah, still good. <laughs> <laughs> but then I showed him the very next weekend. So he went from Raleigh, North Carolina, to the Lazy E, and I won the rain and on there. I marked a 228 on him, and we put him in the trailer and sent him to Burbank, California. And the next weekend, I showed him out there, and I was second in the open on him out there. So he went in three weeks' time. He went <coughs> East Coast to West. Yeah. Wow. He was, he was a good horse. He was a good horse. And then Lindsay showed him a bunch. And Lindsay never showed him. I never oh, let him I thought, ride I thought him. Lindsay you showed know, him. I wouldn't let anybody else ride him. I love that horse. <laughs> Except Tim. You let Tim ride him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought Lindsay showed him. I mean, oh, Kate, I got a big Yeah, that's Kate. right. I that's got a video. Right. Cade, that's the first gold medal horse that kind of gave Cade the feel. Yeah. <laughs> that's where it the started. That's, supposed to feel that's where it started. Yeah. 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 Or did Cade ride the one that Jigs also? Does he no, know what Jigs no, is? No, he never rode that one. Oh, he rode so that he's one. not going to know what a Jigger is. <laughs> no. He went, no, the kids today don't know. They don't know. They don't do that anymore. Yeah, I remember Cade went up there. He wasn't very old. He was little. Yeah, how old was how old Seven. Was he? Seven? Mm. Cade went up there and tried all Scotty's horses. I called Scotty. I said, how did it go? He said, well, it took him about 10 minutes apiece to get through them. And he circled them and stopped them and turned them and changed leads, every one of them. He said, we couldn't saddle them fast enough. Were they, uh, did he criticize you then? No, I don't. He didn't, no, he didn't no. go through them and say, I need to be yeah. a little softer yes, here. He didn't yeah. do that. Yeah. He didn't <laughs> criticize him. But I, he rode Cinco de Mega, the mother to uh, Bill Rhodes' good marriage. Yeah. He rode her and he says to me, he says, Scotty, she kind of drops her shoulder a little bit to the left. Can I pick that up? <laughs> sure. He's seven years old. And he goes around there and he picks that shoulder up. And I said, holy shit, this kid's got something. There's something going on there. Yeah. And, and, uh. Well, a stick horse never cut him. Yeah. <laughs> right up all yeah. the time. Stayed straight. <laughs> yeah, no, he rode them, he rode them all and, and turned mega, stopped them, and, uh. Change leads on him. I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was just fun to watch. Because Mega would have been, uh, God, he had to be 15 or 17 at the time. We didn't have shoes on him. Cade runs down, and stops him, and he slides six feet. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, yeah, he was, he was, he was a fun horse. He was a fun horse, and he's, he's still. I turned him out the other day, and 
he off he lopes across the pasture his knees are big they don't bend but he's, he's not showing any signs of stress he's 29 years old he gets along well he gets along good yeah but that was yeah i don't remember anybody else craig showed him as a young horse and then I showed him, and Tim showed him, and I, I think I don't nobody else ever showed him. And I never showed him at the World Show, and I, I don't know why I didn't. But I showed Cowboy at the World Show, and uh, tied with Bobby Abel. As a matter of fact, Bobby Abel had smarten off, and we tied for reserve champion at the Paturity, mm -hmm. and then we tied the next year at the Old World Bob Show. Old Bob Abel. Yeah, 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 yeah Bob Abel. Yeah. yeah, and uh, and. Uh, we I mean, I'm not saying old. I mean, right. not old one. <clears throat> but not Bobby Avila. The Bob there's Bobby Avila, Avila and the then, old one, and then the younger one. Yeah, yeah. there's Bob Avila and Bobby Avila. Yeah. yeah, and then we had to have a runoff at the World Show, and and I was draw one, and and so I had to go first. And Cowboy was he was just as good the second time as he was the first time. I mean, he was that was a good horse too. Huh. But yeah, Mega Jack came after him. And now, so you, uh, you've got some broodmare, you got a bunch of, I know you're riding a bunch of horses right now, you got a bunch of horses that you're riding, you got some broodmares, you got some cows, you got some dogs. We got a little bit of everything, and, but most of the broodmares we have now are, are um, Mega Jack daughters, and uh, I, I think that's going to be his next lick as a broodmare sire, I think. Um, that's kind of proven out that way right now. Already is, yeah. Isn't it? I think so. Danny Tremblay's horse. Danny Tremblay's horse. Dr. Dr. Bell's horse. Ruben's horse. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's some some sure some some nice mega jet daughters out there now. So we got four or five that we're gonna we're gonna breed and see what we can raise. Matter of fact, two of my thirty colts this year. I've got a gunner special knight that I like a lot out of a mega jack mare, <clears throat> and. Um, I had a really, really cute little horse a couple of years ago named Special Me that I won the prime time for Terry on. And this horse is cute like that. He's cute like that. And then I got a little Joe Cash mare out of Me Mega. And uh, she's, she's a nice, she's a nice filly. So it, it looks like, it looks like the Mega Jack daughters are going to be fun to play with, with some of those nice studs today. Yeah, without a doubt. And, and I, you're breeding them to top end yeah. horses and... Yeah, and your colts. I see a lot of your pictures on Facebook. You get some really pretty colts. Yeah, thanks. So, do you know if they're gonna be chickers or if they get <laughs> They don't take the horse today, Gunny. Get over it. <laughs> <laughs> do you think we can find a way to teach one to jig? I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you what I'll do, Gunny. I'll find one. When we're done here, I'll show you. I'll jig a little for you. Yeah. You should jig for me. <laughs> I'd kind of like to see that. Yeah, I'll show you how it goes. <coughs> when, I know when you're sitting on it, it's like this. <laughs> okay. Okay. This is kind of give you a little something to think about. I think I might have a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a little videotape then and send it to you. Yeah, see I can you tell. Yeah. Tell me if they're oh, yeah. taking yeah. it. Oh, I can tell right away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell right away. Yeah. Uh, now we had a <clears throat> question uh, a couple episodes ago about what advice would you give like non-pros and then up-and-coming trainers? As far as what? Just making it and uh, you know doing the rain and uh, you know being successful both in the non-pro you know competing and then you know, like a trainer starting out or, or just a trainer that's already already going. Well you know I mean that I, I, I mean that's 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 a tough question I, I think that you know the number one thing is is if you're going to be a rain and horse trainer you've got to be selective on the horses you buy or the horses you get or the horses you want to show because there's so many good horses today i mean if we go back for a second to done like a cowboy the reason he was such a great horse was nothing stopped like him back then they all stop like that today. Yeah. He would not be special today. Yeah. He would be one of them today. So that's how, how much the breeders have improved the reigning horse in, in the industry. And I think that's, that's awesome. So the only thing that, the only advice that I could give people is, is find out what you like. 
And and when I say that, take take uh, I'm I'm, I'm going to take Jason Van Landingham for an example. He gets along really really well with the Sparkling Vintage horses. I mean that's he's won a lot of money on those horses, and and so he kind of looks for those. Um, I just be selective on on buying horses. You got to you got to have athletic ability today with pretty, and you know that's not as hard to find today as it was when I started. You know they just you know like Tommy said earlier started the show that you know we started off riding dad's cutters. Yeah. yeah. Show dad's cutters that that he wanted to just get some show experience on. You know, there's there's none of that today. There's none of that today, and and a lot of the horses today are. I look back at some of the horses that I had that were great horses in their time. They they'd be average horses today. Yeah. You know, and and that's again that's not taking away anything from what I had, but it's just how how great these breeding programs are today. Mm -hmm. So, well, the one thing that I kind of caught on to, you, you also used to let, you and Craig used to swap horses a little bit. You don't see that too much now. Usually, you know, if a guy's got his horse, he sticks with it or he sells yeah. it. It, mm -hmm. it, doesn't, it doesn't get sent from you, hey, help me with this, take him for a little while. That's changed a little bit, huh? Yeah, yeah, you, you don't, and I think, I think so much is because <clears throat> there's 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 just that slight insecurity of if I send them to you and you do better with them than me, then you might take my customer. Yeah. You know, I, I think that's a big part of it today. Where we didn't worry about that back then. You know, if somebody had a nice horse, then you wanted that horse to do well, and if you weren't getting the job done, you try somebody else. So. I still think today Craig Johnson is is one of the best horse trainers in the rain horse. Maybe not now because he's not doing rain anymore. But his horses were so broke, and it was fun for me to catch ride them because I would just turn them loose and go. go. And they were broke. They did the they did the deal. Yeah. You know, they were fun to ride, and and that's why that worked. But well, because like you know, like we always talk about, you guys growing up, you rode and showed everything and what you said when you went to the horse show you didn't care what you were showing you just showed and yeah. showed and showed and showed and did whatever and just went in the pen and you rode everything and that doesn't really people don't have that opportunity now and how how much that changed you you know your life in the and, and it's a horse different trainer. And, and not only that joe but it's different here so like when we would go to a horse show up in, in in wisconsin there might be 10 rangers and when i moved down here the very first horse show I went to, there was 50 rainers. A lot of them were ropers, a lot of them were cow horse guys that wanted to get coins on their rope horses or something. <clears throat> and it's still that way today. The rainers here are so big, you can't get away doing that today. Yeah. But back then, we'd go to a rain, you'd have a big rain. And I can remember when, when uh, Sean Flaherty came down to the Red Bud and showed Whiskey and Diamonds. And I asked him, why would you come down here all the way from Ohio? He says, because in one run, and he won it under all three judges, put 27 points on that he horse. He smoked him too, it yeah. looked easy. Yep, yeah. and he said, I could show all summer long in Ohio and not be qualified for the world. Yeah. Huh. So that's just the difference down here. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's so much bigger and, and it's, everybody's good now. Yeah. Shoot, yeah. Yeah. I mean, in Waco a couple weeks ago, there wasn't a class that was over a thousand added. There wasn't one class that was over a thousand added. They sold 530 stalls. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, people are craving to go horse show. Mm -hmm. Record numbers everywhere. People are craving to go horse show. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the, the future looks bright. Mm -hmm. So, what advice would you give to non pros? You know, same thing. You know, don't, if you're going to have one horse, have it something you really like. Don't don't sell for even if it costs maybe a little bit more. You know, find a way to try to get it bought. <clears throat> don't don't sell for well. This is all I can afford. And this if you're going to have one horse, have it the one that you really like to ride. You like to spend time with, and mm -hmm. and you love showing it, and it shows easy and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it makes it that much more fun. Makes it so much more when fun. It's not a struggle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now that's 
that's always been my one thing with the with the non pros is is if you're only going to have one or two horses, or well, have one or two really nice ones, they may not be the winner, but they're easy. You're going to yeah. go and you're going to mark 71, 72, get a place. You may not win the class, but it's a horse that's easy to prepare, easy to show. You don't have to ride all night. I mean, non pros are supposed to go to the horse show, go out to dinner, go to a movie. They're supposed to ride all night, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, Make it fun. Make it fun. I agree. Well, our time is up, boys. Yep. Scotty, thanks for coming down. Yeah, that yeah, was great, enjoyed man. It. No, it's good. I wish, we, I wish we had made fun of Tom more, Scotty. Yeah, that didn't go as planned. No. I thought we were going to just cut him down. I, I really wanted you to just... It's not it that easy. Yeah. No. You don't have that easy. It's not that easy. I do, but, you know, when we were young... I probably took care of him even more than my parents. So he's kind of my, like my little kid. Yeah. And you can't do that to your kid. No. You can't no. do that to your little brother. You can't cut him down from that camera. No, can't do it. Well, we'll do it next week. Yeah, next time you're, <laughs> next time you're here. All right, thanks, everybody. It was fun. Sounds good. And everybody remember, if you like us, like it, share it, uh, comment on it, and help us grow the show. Go to the new Facebook page. And go to the new Facebook page and like it. We'll try and get it out there. We're going to continue to try and uh, try and grow it. We're growing a little bit all the time, and we're having fun with it. So we'll keep doing it. And send some comments on your hat if we made fun of you. You know, make sure to get That's a hold right. of Mandy or somebody. Yeah, don't forget if we made fun of you in the in well, the you know, get, get a hold of Monica. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, call the whoever. In the episode, yeah. If you need a hat, get a hold of Mandy or Monica. Thank you.